On the first day of September at 1 p.m., we boarded a Delta airline flight from Detroit for a two-hour trip to Atlanta, and then an eight-and-a-half-hour flight to Madrid, Spain. Just before arriving, we could see miles and miles of olive groves. The Madrid airport is big, but easy to get around. That morning, we arrived about 10 a.m., and our Trafalgar travel bus was there to meet us for the short ride into the city. We are staying at the five-star Grand Hotel Colón Doctor Esquardo for one night. Some of our fellow travelers chose to go to their rooms for some rest, while others of us decided to go for a walking tour to see the nearby streets, cafes, and some shops. At Detroit Metro Airport, we are booked on a Delta flight to the John F. Kennedy Airport in New York City. From there, we have an eight-hour flight to Helsinki. And from the Helsinki Airport, another two-hour flight over the Arctic Circle to the village of Ivalo, Finland. The population in this area is about 4,000 humans and 25,000 reindeer. We overnight at the Ivalo Hotel, which has a fine dining room and a great view of the Inari River. After dinner, our new friends, Lois and Hugh, enjoy a swing on the glider. Reindeer are a hazard, as the reindeer are permitted to run free in the Sami regions of Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Russia. The bus driver told me he hits about five reindeer a year. We make a rest stop at this Sami store and casino. At this location, we are about 250 miles north of the Arctic Circle. Not far away is a float plane. In mid-October on a late afternoon flight, my wife Catherine and I departed from the new Detroit terminal on Lufthansa Airlines for Frankfurt, Germany. At Frankfurt, we had a short layover for a connecting flight to St. Petersburg, Russia. On Wednesday, we boarded the MS Tiki Don for our river cruise to Moscow. This ship of Russian registry is owned by Grand Circle Travel, an American company. It is 358 feet long with five decks. Passenger capacity, 216, plus a crew of 109. We arrived at the Athens airport late in the day, and by the time we went through customs, it was near dusk as we traveled by bus into the city. Athens is a city of two and a half million people. This iconic temple was dedicated to the old gods of Athens, also to Athena and Poseidon, god of the sea. On the south porch of this temple, we see the Caryatid statues, whose purpose was to support the roof of the temple. Our guide points out the Areopagus, also known as Mars Hill. The Netherlands, or Holland as it is sometimes called, is about the size of Connecticut and Massachusetts combined. Returning to our ship, the River Melody, we check our cabin and get ready for our afternoon departure. Our first view of the countryside this afternoon. We will be cruising through the night and arrive at noon tomorrow in Cologne. Not long after we get underway and soon hear the alarm for lifeboat drill, which is required on every ship. The city of Helsinki is surrounded by water on three sides. 
It was one of the first planned municipalities and is noted for its 19th century neoclassic architecture. The city is also very compact and easy to explore on foot. There are several public squares and garden parks. 25% of Finland's people live in and around Helsinki. We are staying at the Scandic Hotel, Simon Kent, which is near the large Stockman's shopping center. Our location is in easy walking distance to the harbor markets, including city landmarks, buildings, and parks. If you wanted to go to Alaska 110 years ago, you either walked or took a boat. In 1897 and 98, well over 100,000 people walked or took a boat on their way to the gold fields to stake out a claim in the Yukon. Since we were not looking for gold, we decided to travel by air on Northwest Airlines during their mechanics strike, using the new terminal at Metro Airport, our first time at this beautiful terminal. We are at the base of the huge ice field called the Reed Glacier. The walls of this glacier are about 150 feet high. Believe it or not, there are black worms living in the crevices of the glacier. Ice worms do exist. They are really purple in color. They feed on the algae and the organic debris. This time of year, calving rarely occurs. But in June and July, this is what you would see. We now take the narrow channel further into the bay. This is the area of several glaciers, the Brady, the Grand, and the John Hopkins. Our captain takes us in for a special close-up look at the great John Hopkins Glacier. He slowly moves in to about 150 feet from the wall of the glacier. What a view. 